Breaking news from outer space. Truth and fiction, same embrace. Lance and Gina lead the way. Decoding myths. It's kind of wild how we've always, you know, been so fascinated by stories about alien invasions. Right. Like War of the Worlds, Independence Day. Oh, yeah. It's like this, this collective fear almost oh. about what might be like lurking out there in space, mm. you know. But lately it feels like it's it's getting a bit too real. Yeah, and what's so interesting is for the longest time, we always thought of extraterrestrial life as pure science fiction. But then stuff starts happening. Like you remember that Navy encounter back in 2004, the Tic Tac UFO? Oh yeah. And then there's Umamua 2 in 2023, that weird trajectory. It really changed the conversation. Now even scientists are like, hold on, maybe we're not alone after all. Exactly. It's <laughs> not just grainy photos and like campfire stories anymore. Oh, no. We're talking trained Navy pilots, radar data, all this evidence piling up. So that brings us to what we're diving deep into today. Project Aegis. Project Aegis, a top secret global initiative. The goal, protecting Earth from potential alien threats. Think about it. A whole network of weaponized satellites, 42 of them. A secret command center hidden deep under Cheyenne Mountain. This thing is massive. And it was totally secret until, well, very recently. It's like something straight out of a, like a Tom Clancy novel. I know, right? We only know about it because of John Michaels, that incredible journalist from 60 Minutes. Right. He's the one who, like, Blew the whole thing wide open, revealed how big this operation actually is. And the craziest part, the international collaboration. Project Aegis, it's not just one country showing off, it's everyone. It's the UN Security Council, China, the US, all working together. Makes you wonder, what kind of threat could bring everyone together like that? That's exactly what we're going to dig into today. We'll look at the science behind it, the technology, which is mind-blowing, the ethics of it all, the money involved, and the big question, is Project Aegis what we need? Or is it, like, a huge overreaction? But first, got to go back. Back to those events that made everyone, especially scientists, realize, hey, maybe those alien threats aren't just sci-fi after all. Right. Let's rewind to 2004. The Navy's encounter with the Tic Tac. What makes this so compelling is that it basically breaks physics as we know it. If we believe what the pilots said, the radar data, it means there's something out there beyond our science. Yeah, this wasn't just a blip on a screen, right? Multiple witnesses, experienced pilots, all describing the same thing. This object making moves that are impossible, like instant changes in direction, insane speeds, nothing they'd ever seen before. It wasn't just seeing it either. The radar backed it up. Something truly strange was going on. So you've got this thing doing things we can't explain, and the experts are stumped. No wonder it made people start asking some serious questions about what else could be out there. And then, boom, a few years later, another shock to the system. Umua 2, the first thing we ever saw from outside our solar system just passing through. I remember everyone thought it was just a comet or an asteroid at first, right? Yeah. Exactly. Just another space rock. But then... Scientists noticed something off about how it was moving. It wasn't behaving like a normal space object. It was accelerating, but not because of gravity. Okay, so this thing from another star system, also breaking the laws of physics, it's like the universe is trying to tell us something, right? It definitely got people's attention, especially scientists like Dr. Evelyn Carter. We'll talk about her more later. She was one of the first to say, maybe Uamuatus isn't just a rock. Maybe it's something someone made. Alien technology, perhaps. Oh, hold on. So not just some lights in the sky, but an actual thing from another star, maybe built by aliens. That's a whole other level. It definitely changes things. And for the people in charge of keeping us safe, well, these two events and a bunch of other weird stuff happening were a big wake-up call. They realized this alien thing, it wasn't just a story anymore. It was a real possibility, and they had to get ready. And that's where Dr. Evelyn Carter and Project Aegis come into the picture. Dr. Carter, she's a fascinating person, top astrophysicist, kind of a rebel, and she'd been saying for years, we're going to meet aliens. It's not a matter of if, it's when she thinks it's inevitable, and we got to be prepared. That's that's kind of scary when you think about it. Yeah. It makes you wonder, do the people running Project Aegis, do they even have the right to make those calls for everyone? That's a huge question. One we'll definitely unpack as we go. But for now, let's stick to the project itself. Remember that article about the Cheyenne Mountain Complex? It sounds like something out of a spy movie. Oh, totally. Imagine this, like giant underground bunker buried in a mountain, built to survive a nuke. The kind of place you'd expect to find like like 
a super villain, right? But this one's the control center for stopping an alien invasion. Wild, right? From Cold War fears to like alien threats. What about the system itself, those 42 satellites? How do they actually work? Well, they've got these things called High Energy Microwave Weapon Systems, MMWS for short. Okay. Imagine a beam of microwave energy, super focused, powerful enough to fry electronics, shut down engines, but they're not blowing stuff up, not in the classic sense. It's more like a really high-tech EMP blast. So they could, like, disable an alien spaceship without just blowing it to bits. Exactly. But wouldn't something that powerful need a crazy amount of energy? You're right. And this is where it gets even wilder. These satellites, they run on mini nuclear reactors and solar power. The idea is to keep them going no matter what, even in the harshness of space. Mini nuclear reactors in space? That's insane. Wouldn't other countries be able to see them, though? That's where stealth tech comes in. Mm. These things are designed to be practically invisible, to radar, to everything, like ghosts in orbit. Whoa. And to manage it all. An AI, super advanced, watching everything, making decisions, even taking action on its own. 42 stealth satellites, nuclear powered, controlled by AI. It's insane what we can do when we think there's a threat, huh? But a system this powerful, this expensive, you gotta wonder, what about misuse? Who's really in control? You're spot on. And that takes us to the next part of our deep dive. The global effort behind Project Aegis. The ethics, the money, all of it. Okay, so we've got these stealth satellites armed with crazy microwave weapons orbiting Earth powered by nuclear reactors, and all controlled by AI. It's kind of hard to wrap your head around, right? It is pretty mind-blowing. But let's uh, let's shift gears a bit. Talk about the global effort behind this whole thing. It's not every day you see countries like you know China and the U.S. putting aside their differences to work together. Yeah, Project Aegis really is a remarkable example of international collaboration. It's like everyone realized this isn't just one country's problem, it's everyone's problem. Yeah. And they had to come together. The article we read mentioned Ambassador Liang Wei from China, and they talked about Project Aegis as a new kind of diplomacy. What do they mean by that? Well, they were basically saying that, you know, this threat from space, it's forced countries to rethink their priorities. It's like all those old rivalries and disagreements, they don't matter as much anymore because now there's this bigger shared goal. So the possibility of aliens actually brings about world peace, even if it's because we're all scared. It's definitely a possibility. But it's not just governments working together, right? The article also mentioned private companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin. Oh yeah, those guys. Aren't they usually like competitors they are in the commercial space race but they've both been crucial in getting those satellites up there for project aegis so we've got government scientists private companies everyone pitching in but this level of like global teamwork and technology it, it can't be cheap right you're absolutely right the cost of project aegis has been a huge pur of contention i bet how much are we talking 500 billion dollars 500 billion that's that's an insane amount of money couldn't that money be used for like more pressing problems here on earth you know climate change poverty all that stuff you're hitting on a very valid point critics of the project argue that we should be focusing on the problems we have right now not some hypothetical threat from outer space yeah i mean it's hard to argue with that logic. We know there's suffering happening now and we have limited resources. It's like, how do you justify spending that much on something that might happen? It's a tough question. The people behind Project Aegis, they say that the cost of doing nothing, of not being prepared for this threat, could be far greater than the 500 billion. So they're basically saying that if we don't protect ourselves from aliens, nothing else matters. In a nutshell, yes. They believe that the survival of humanity depends on defending ourselves from all threats, from Earth and beyond. It's a pretty heavy argument. It definitely makes you think, how do we decide what's more important, the problems we have right now or this potential threat in the future? It's a question that humanity will have to grapple with as Project Aegis becomes more and more public. But let's talk about something else. Has this thing ever actually been used? Good question. I was wondering that myself. Well, apparently it has. Back in 2024, they used Project Aegis to take out a rogue satellite. A rogue satellite. What does that even mean? Was it like a weapon? Not really a weapon. It was more like a broken down piece of space junk, something that was out of control and could have caused problems, maybe even hurt someone if it fell back to Earth. So they used Project Aegis to destroy it, like a test run. Exactly. And according to Colonel James Thornton, who works on the project, it was a total success. Huh. So it works, at least for that. Mm-hmm. But if it's been around for a while, why are they just now 
telling everyone about it. It was a very tightly kept secret, but there are a couple of reasons why they've decided to go public now. Okay, I'm listening. First, there's been a huge increase in UAP reports, those unexplained things in the sky. You mean like more UFO sightings? Is that why they're coming clean? Because yeah. they're seeing more stuff they can't explain. It's definitely part of it. Most of those reports can be explained away, but there are some that are still mysteries. And that's making people nervous, both scientists and the folks in charge of keeping us safe. So they're basically saying, hey, we know there's weird stuff out there and we're taking it seriously. But there's got to be another reason, right? Especially with all that money involved. You're right. The second reason is they need public support to keep the project going. Five hundred billion dollars... You can't hide that forever. Makes sense. You got to get the taxpayers on board eventually. Exactly. And to do that, you got to be honest about what you're doing and why. So transparency is key. But it feels like they're also trying to get us ready for something, like the fact that we might not be alone and there might be danger out there. Dr. Carter has actually said that we need people to understand that this is our best chance, our only chance to protect ourselves. It's a pretty powerful statement. It makes you think, doesn't it? Project Aegis, it's not just about weapons and satellites. It's about how we, as humans, are dealing with the unknown. It really is. It's a reflection of our curiosity, our fear, our desire to survive. That's a great point. Project Aegis is more than just technology or politics. It's a story about humanity. And it's a story that's still unfolding. We don't know what the ending will be. All right, so we talked about the science, the tech, the global effort, the money, the whole nine yards. But now it's time to get philosophical. What does it all mean? What are the ethics of this whole thing? It's a huge question, right? We've built this powerful system to protect us from something we barely understand. But who are we to decide what's a threat and what isn't? And what happens when we use that power? Could it actually make things worse? Well, we've talked about a lot, haven't we? Project Aegis, I mean. Yeah. From those first weird events to how this whole system works, the countries involved, the money. But now it feels like we need to talk about the the bigger stuff, you know. What does it all actually mean? It is kind of mind-boggling when you step back, right? Yeah. Project Aegis, it's not just about the tech or strategy. It's making us face these these huge philosophical questions, ethical ones too. Like we built this super powerful thing to stop a threat, but we don't even really know that threat. So who decides what's dangerous and what happens if we use this power? It's like all those sci-fi stories, those worries we had, they're they're becoming real now. Are we even ready for that? Big question, right? And I don't think there's an easy answer. Remember, Dr. Carter said Project Aegis is about hope, but it also makes you think about us, about humans, you know, our fears, wanting to be safe, even if it means maybe missing out on something bigger. Yeah, is it truly hope? Mm. Or more like wanting to be in control? Like, we gotta make the universe fit our rules, even though we barely understand it. Maybe it's both, right? It makes sense to want to protect ourselves, but it's also risky, assuming we know best. Like, we get to decide how things go down if we meet someone else out there. And remember all those UFO sightings. It's like they're getting us used to the idea that we're not alone. Yeah. But what if we actually do make contact? Is Project Aegis really enough? Or could it, I don't know, make things worse? Another tough one. Depends who we meet, right? What they're like. Project Aegis, it assumed that if aliens are advanced enough to reach us, they're going to be a threat. But what if that's not true? Yeah, are we just, like, judging them based on ourselves? Like, humans are bad, so aliens must be too. Kinda, yeah. It's like looking in a mirror, but we see our own fears instead of what's really there. So where does that leave us? We've looked at the science, the technology, the whole global thing. But the big question is, what kind of future do we want? One where we're scared, striking first. Or one where we're, I don't know, more open, ready to learn. That choice is on us, on all of us. Project Aegis shows how smart we are, how much we want to survive. But it also shows our dark side, you know, our fear that we might lash out. It's a tricky balance. Maybe that's the lesson here. Project Aegis, it's like this mirror showing us who we are as we look out into space, hoping, but scared too. And we don't know how it ends. And that's what's so fascinating, right? It's not just about the technology or the politics. It's about us, our place in the universe, what we're afraid of, and how much we want to keep going. This has been a wild ride unpacking all this, but in the end, the biggest question is for you listening. What do you think about Project Aegis? Good idea, bad idea? What are your hopes, your fears about meeting someone else out there? Tell us in the comments. And as always, keep exploring with us right here on The Deep Dive.